Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video you will learn everything that you need to know about the brand new Compose Multi-Platform Hot Reload, which we finally have. It's currently in alpha. What does this mean? You will learn how you can set up something like this, that in Compose Multi-Platform in your project, you can simply change something about your Compose UI and then it will reflect these changes in live in your running application. So I will go over things like how you of course set this whole thing up in your Compose Multi-Platform project. I will go over questions like whether you should already use it since it's an alpha, it's in a very early stage. And of course about current limitations of Compose Hot Reload. So there are now two scenarios that could apply to you. On the one hand, you are just starting off with a completely fresh uh, Compose multi-platform project. Then I got good news for you because you don't need to set up anything since the entire setup for Hot Reload uh, is already included in the uh, template from JetBrains. So in that case, you just need to go to kmp.jetbrains.com and let's close this off here. Uh, make sure to tick all these three boxes. Very important, tick the desktop box here because this is one of, of the current limitations from uh, Hot Reload that it currently only works in projects that have a desktop target. So only on the running desktop program. This doesn't mean you can only Hot Reload your desktop code because you can still Hot Reload your shared code, which you would also use on iOS and Android, and you can also dynamically change the frames width to actually match the dimensions of an Android or iOS device. But the reload mechanism just works at the moment if it's running in a desktop application. But I'm pretty sure JetPrint is already working on improvements here that this also works on the mobile sites. So just tick these boxes here, give it a package name, a project name, download this, you will download a zip file, extract it, and then simply open the folder in your project in Android Studio. But here comes the next catch, at least for me, I needed the preview version as of now from Android Studio, so the Narwhal version, in order to make this work. Uh, this is something that isn't explicitly stated in JetBrains guide, but it simply did not work for me in the stable Android Studio version in the, um, what is it called, the uh, Meerkat one, but I had to use the preview one, you can see Android Studio Preview 4, uh, which is called uh, here, um, where is it about in a studio, Narwhal feature drop. This is the one that I'm using here in this video. And technically, if you downloaded the zip file, it will work out of the box. However, it can of course also happen that you already have an existing Compose multi-platform project and then you just need to change some Gradle config, which I want you to go over here so you know what to do. First of all, in the end, this Compose hot reload feature is in the end just a, a Gradle plugin that we can apply here. So on the one hand, go to your version catalog, under Gradle, libs.versions, Tommel. Make sure to add this version here uh, at the moment. This is the latest one, 1.0 and alpha 10. And this version is then referenced down here in the uh, plugins section for Compose Hot Reload. This is the ID, reference the version. And then you can jump into your shared modules built at Gradle KTS. So the module where your uh, Kotlin multi-platform plugin is also installed in or applied in and here you can simply say alias, um, oh, actually that one, alias Compose Hot Reload. This is how you apply this plugin in a shared uh, Compose multi-platform plugin. You may also need to go to your build at Gradle project level file, so the at the very root one here. And if it doesn't look like this for you, then you need to make sure to be on the project view and not the Android one, because then it will look differently. But then you go here to the project level file and you also say, Compose hot reload and you say apply false so that you just put this plugin on the class path and um, individual modules can then apply it in these Gradle files like here. Last but not least, there is a small change uh, necessary here in the settings Gradle file, which is also located here at the root hierarchy. So if we open this up, then down here, we need to um, also add a plugins block in the settings file that looks like this. So this is just some kind of tooling dependency that will make this whole thing work. In regards to Kotlin version, this is supported from Kotlin uh, 2.1.20 beta 2 and up. Or in other words, uh, right now the latest stable version of Kotlin is 2.1.21. So this will obviously then also be uh, supported here. And this will be the, the current version that you will also get with um, downloading the zip file from the bro uh, project wizard from JetBrains. And last but not least, which is important, and that's also not stated in JetBrains' guide, unless I miss something, you have to enable K2, so the new uh, Kotlin compiler, in order to make this work, because I've previously disabled that since it was still a little bit buggy in some situations. It broke my syntax highlighting in Android Studio, uh, but I guess most of the newer features here uh, regarding Kotlin and uh, Kotlin multi-platform 
will be based on this new compiler. So you need to enable that by going to your settings, searching for K2, going to Kotlin and here this check must be there. Enable K2 mode so under languages and frameworks, Kotlin. Make sure this check is there. If it's not, put it there, uh, restart your IDE and then you will be good and uh, ready to actually jump into the main KT file, which is under source desktop main KT. So simply in your desktop main source set, which contains your desktop specific code. This is how it looks like. So this is just the entry point for your desktop program. Here it can help if you actually put this always on top uh, parameter to true, because this will um, pretty much force the window to always be um, at the top and not if you click outside that it will, um, that you will lose the focus and that it will jump to the background. Um, that's, that can be quite annoying if you're just uh, trying to preview something, you maybe have two monitors and um, having this window always on the second one. Um, so for debugging purposes or for um, development purposes, keep this on true. But then you can actually hit play here and then this new uh, option here will appear for you to run compose app with compose hot reload in alpha. And that is what we want to do. We do this, uh, we click here and then our demo application will actually start. This is how it looks like. You will also notice that there's a little bubble here that will always keep on moving with us. This is simply a little tooling information window. So you see uh, some debug information about what this uh, plugin is doing. You probably don't need this unless uh, something breaks and you need to um, play around with, uh, with something. How do we now make this work? Make sure to keep this open, of course. That's the whole point of hot reload. And then now we can jump into our common main code because this is, of course, where we write most of our UI code. And here we can really change anything about our code. So we can give this a background of color dot cyan, for example. And the moment we now save our file, you will see something happens and after one, maybe two seconds, we see our change in life. This is important to mention here and important to uh, make a habit. What well, also wasn't immediately clear to me that you have to save the file. So the moment you save the file, the uh, Compose Hot Reload plugin will take a look at the, um, at the new files that have been uh, written to disk and then uh, refresh the, um, I think the related classes that have changed between the different saves. And this really also works with adding new composables here. So if we wanna have a text field and we say value is hello world on value change and save, there's our text field. So for me, this already works pretty well. Um, there seems to be one little limitation and that is that the state is not yet preserved here in this UI. So you can see uh, the default setup here for Compose Multiplatform has this click me button. If we click it, we see some more content. And this is simply uh, toggled via this uh, show content mutable compose state. But if this is now set to true and we actually change our text, for example, to that state, show content uh, dot to string, we refresh, then you can see it's actually false and the state resets. So this is one of the limitations right now of Flutter, uh, which uh, originally introduced this mechanism, I think, um, does preserve the state. And I can also imagine that this is something uh, that JetBrains will figure out and implement sooner or later. So lastly, should you now already use this, given that it's an alpha, as I mentioned, it's an early stage, it's in development. But honestly, using this hard reload mechanism that is in alpha is not the same thing as using a library that is in alpha. Because in the end, it's just a tool that you use during development. It's not some kind of alpha library that is really baked into your production code that could break something in your production app. No, it's really just a tool you use during development. And if something breaks about this tool because it's an alpha, then that does not mean anything about breaking your app. And so far, this has worked pretty reliably for me. Um, so try it out, give it a shot. So just summary, make sure to be on the Android Studio Preview version. K2 compiler, Kotlin uh, 2.1.21, and make sure to preview your UI here on the desktop target. As I said, here in your shared code, you will of course also have your, your UI that you want to have on the mobile side. You can of course also preview this on the desktop side with hard reload. And then you can dynamically change the window here and uh, it will adjust to your um, phone's dimensions. And you can also see how responsive your UI actually is. And if from time to time you actually have questions about such newer technologies like Compose Multiplatform, Cotton Multiplatform, then check the Mobile Dev Campus down below, which is a place where me and my team and many, many other mobile developers are active, where you can always ask your questions and get an answer from experienced professionals. And a lot more, like 30 hours plus of video material, 
uh, you get coding challenges, all that kinds of stuff that really prepares you for the industry as a mobile developer. Check it out. Thanks for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye.